I know a lot of people who watch this channel like it much, much more because I'm more animated and I use more adjectives and sometimes expletives. But if you do follow my main channel, which is admittedly larger, and it's at youtube.com slash timcast, the videos there are much more well-produced and much more polished and I'm a bit toned down. But the reason I bring that up is because I have talked about this several times now. The blue wave isn't happening. Democrats are walking it back. They're scared. Early voting numbers suggest Republicans are outpacing Democrats. It may be that the polls are wrong. And about uh, several, several days ago, I made a video asking if the polls were wrong. The reason I brought this up is because of the sentiment. In 2016, I saw every poll saying Donald Trump was a loser, wasn't going to win. Hillary Clinton had it in the bag. Some people said 100% chance he was going to win. Well, they were wrong. Nate Silver forecasted, I think it was like a 75 to 80% chance for Hillary. Admittedly, he did still give Trump a chance to win, and Trump ended up winning. When this was all going on, I saw these polls, but I also saw the ridiculous enthusiasm for Trump. These massive lines stretching miles to get into the Trump event. I was at a Trump event where even after the event was about to end, there was still a ridiculously long line that was probably a couple miles long. I'm not even kidding. It was like thousands and thousands of people who knew the event was going to end, and they weren't going to get in, and they were standing there anyway, and I didn't know why. Seeing all of that, I felt like, how could Donald Trump lose this? This is ridiculous. How is that po Well, the polls are saying, you know, and who am I, who am I to know better? Well, here's what's happening now. They're saying the Democrats are going to win, likely going to win the House. But then something interesting happens. Once again, I am seeing way more sentiment in favor of, Donald, of the Republicans and Trump and not for the Democrats. Because of this, I made a video where I said, I just don't think it's going to be the way they're claiming it's going to be. Then we saw the Democrats actually walking things back, saying, oh, you know, the blue wave is not a thing. We, we always thought it was going to be close. And now, apparently, Nate Silver of 538 is actually walking things back a little bit, too. It sounds like the pollsters don't know if they're right. And it sounds like those who are so confident the Democrats were going to take the House, the majority, they're actually not so confident anymore. Here's a story from Vox, the terrifying uncertainty at the heart of 538's election forecasts. The myth of the election prediction wizard is no more. Oh my. The forecasts are in and they say the 20, 2018 elections can go a number of ways. If you're following election coverage and forecasting models, you know the conventional wisdom at this point. Democrats are the favorites to take the House and Republicans are the favorites to hold the Senate. 538's classic forecast which has become the gold standard in elections forecasting, gives Democrats 85.6% chance to, of retaking the House and Republicans an 81.3% chance of holding the Senate as of Tuesday evening. So both of those are highly likely to happen, right? Well, one person who's been trying to complicate that assessment is 538 founder Nate Silver himself. Interesting. One point Silver has made over and over again in recent weeks is that even if you take his House and Senate forecast at face value, when you think about both of them together, there's around a 40% chance that one of them will be wrong. Now, why is it that Nate Silver is walking things back? Is it possible that he is doubting his own forecast? First of all, I would say the answer to that question must be yes. There's a few reasons, though. 2016 was really, really bad for the pollsters, and it was really, really bad for the media because it showed everything they were doing was wrong. I had a pundit tell me that they saw all of this news about Hillary Clinton gonna be, you know, being the winner. Then they went on the ground in North Carolina and saw nothing but Trump signs. And they said, how could that be? How can the media be so wrong? Well, here's what happens. 538, they were one of these pollsters, one of these companies that had egg on their face. Your forecast was wrong. In fact, 538 was slow to change. When there was, there was like this meter on the New York Times that was showing Trump's likelihood of winning slowly going up. It was like a little you know, bar going like that. Nate Silver was actually dragging his feet. 538's, you know, even with all of these victories coming in, 538 was, was steadfast, giving the majority to Hillary Clinton until finally it was certain Trump was going to win. Then they flipped. So what happens? Their credibility is shot, okay? So now coming in 2016, his confidence is shaken. He doesn't know if he's going to be right or not. So he, all, he has to do two things. He's got to walk things back because he needs to make sure that if he is wrong, he can say, well, look, you know, I kind of walked things back. And at the same time, he, him, he, he, doesn't, he probably doesn't have the confidence as much as he did before the election. So his confidence is shot. And he also has to run some kind of protection in the event he's wrong. Meaning he's going to say, yes, here's what we're saying, but we could be wrong. I don't want anyone to think that we, we, we're 100% on this. 
One point Silver has made over and over again is that, uh, in recent weeks is that even if you take his House and Senate forecast at face value, when you think about both of them together, there's around a 40% chance that one of them will be wrong. He elaborated on this on Twitter this week, making a point that's important to understand that a very normal sized polling error in either direction could result in a dramatically different outcome. Interesting. So we shouldn't bother looking at the polls because even Nate Silver is saying a 40% chance that he's wrong. Flip a coin. Why should I bother looking at your polls? How about I, how about I go in my room? I roll a D20 and depending on what comes out, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, I got a 17. I'm going to say it's going to be for the Republicans. If you're giving me a 40% chance that you're wrong, then your prediction, in my opinion, is almost worthless. Why would I bother listening to someone who thinks they got a 35 to 40% chance of being wrong? Come on. Nate Silver said, this is a unique election in which there will be a big there there will be big practical consequences if polls are off by even a r relatively modest amount in either direction although a house senate split is the most likely outcome there's a 35 to 40% chance that one party wins both chambers 40% <laughs> so why would i assume that your predictions are worth anything. He goes on, if polls underestimate Republicans by two to three points, which is very a, a very normal sized polling error, the House is a district by district nail biter. If polls underestimate Dems by two to three points, their path to victory in the Senate is much more viable. Toss ups go either way. Tennessee, Texas, close, etc. Let's pause on this. Republicans holding the Senate and narrowly holding the House would, of course, be an enormous victory for the party. Conversely, a Democratic takeover of both chambers would be a stunning win for them. Either would, would have seismic consequences for the Trump administration's future. And either of those outcomes is just a very normal sized polling error away or so from happening. Okay, here's the point. What are they trying to say? What is the point of this article? The point of this article is to say, we do polls, but it might be totally bullshit. In which case, why are we bothering to look at polls anymore? There was a time where pollsters would say like, here's what we can expect. And they tended to be correct. Nate Silver was wrong in 2016. Everyone was wrong in 2016. Actually, let me ask you, comment below. Was there anybody who was right? Was there, uh, Ann Coulter, she's not a pollster, but she said on Bill Maher, Donald Trump had the best chance of winning. I don't, I don't know if she was, she, was, she was talking specifically about Hillary Clinton, but at least she said that much. All they're doing with all of this is basically giving us some complicated reason as to why their polls are worthless. Because seriously, if you're saying there's a 40% chance your polls are wrong, can I just, can I go, can I go flip a coin? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to release Tim Pool's forecast by flipping a coin and telling you who I think is going to win. Is that good enough for you? Apparently not. Either of those outcomes, uh, yeah, yeah. These days, savvy election watchers have to keep two ideas in their heads at the same time. The best way to get some sense of what the election day outcome will, will be is to look at polling averages or models like 538. But polls of the state or house races often get the final margin wrong by several points. And just because a forecast shows an outcome as unlikely doesn't mean it's impossible. In other words, uncertainty, 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 then why? Why should we care at all about what the polls have to say? What ends up happening? is I run stories based on the polls. I make videos based on the polls because that's what the, the standard is. Everyone assumes the polls have some reason to believe they're correct. But if the reality is in the House and Senate races, there is a, there is a large enough margin of error to make it that the polls are inherently worthless, or at least that you're only getting a 10% edge, why do we run stories on them? And why does any of it matter? The Democrats had been saying for a long time, expect the blue wave. A bunch of Democrats on Twitter put little blue wave emojis in their names. But now the Democrats are saying, oh, we don't want to use the blue wave. Well, it's not, no, we think it's going to be a close race. And now Vox is running defense for the polls. Nate Silver is running defense for the polls. Okay, I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. I have no problem being wrong. I am not, I am not clairvoyant. I cannot predict the future. And I am not a pollster. It is not my job to let you know what will happen, but I will tell you my opinion. I think the Republicans are going to take the majority in both. And if they're saying there's a 40% chance that one party wins both chambers, I really don't see it being the Democrats because I do not see the Democratic enthusiasm. I don't. I see, I've seen NPR. They ran a poll saying Democratic enthusiasm is now like two points higher than Republicans and they lost their edge. But when I look at the internet and I'm not in an internet bubble, I follow like uh, actually, I read Vox. Here's, here's the thing. Let me just, let me end by saying this. I'm on Vox.com right now, okay? You want to know why I think the Democrats aren't going to take it? I don't read Breitbart or Infowars. 
I don't read the right wing, like, like the right wing sites that are claiming the Republicans are going to win and, and Trump's the best. I don't read those sites. Sometimes I'll use them when those links come up on social media. But for the most part, I actually go to Vox.com. I actually go to BuzzFeed.com. I go to these sites to read what they have to say. Vox, not a big fan. I think they're kind of racist. But BuzzFeed's okay. They're definitely biased, but I think BuzzFeed's okay. And a lot of people don't like that I say that, but it's true. It is, it is true. When I go to these sites, Vox has said the Democrats aren't leading, uh, leech, reaching out to Latinos, and, that, and that's going to cost them. Vox now running a story saying, well, the polls might be wrong. Who is shaking in their boots? Who is showing no confidence? It ain't the Republicans. They're dancing around with their frog memes and waving their flags around having a good old time. They're making jokes about NPC memes and laughing all the way back to the little polling station. Vox is the one saying, well, we could be wrong, guys. Our polls might be off. I mean, the Democrats aren't reaching out to Latinos. If you want to inspire confidence in me and make me think you might win, not the way to do it. So when I read left-wing sites, left-leaning sites like Vox and BuzzFeed, and they say, oh, you know, Trump's doing well. Oh, there's a winning streak. You know, Trump's doing great. Oh, the, the Democrats aren't doing so well. Why would I believe the polls claiming the Democrats are going to do well? Take that. Take the uncertainty and fear. And I say fear because they say terrifying uncertainty on top of this article. Take that fear and uncertainty from, from Vox and then take the cool confidence of the NPC meme shit posting right and ask me who I think is going to win. On top of that, your terrifying uncertainty article is literally about why your polls might be wrong. I hope, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're the ones trying to keep a level head. I don't know. The point is, why should I believe you have any edge if you're the ones who don't have the confidence, right? We'll see what happens on November 6th, I guess. I'm definitely gonna be running a bunch more stories about the midterms on my main channel, but um, hey, I think, we're, I think we're gonna keep seeing this from the left. Their fear and uncertainty literally calling it terrifying uncertainty. I haven't seen that kind of sentiment from the right. The right has talked about the red tide taking over. The right has talked about this red tide or the blue flush. They're saying they're going to sweep out the, the Democrats. And now the Democrats are saying, well, well, we're walking back the blue wave. Okay. All right. We'll see what happens. And we'll see if the Democrats have it. Maybe they do. Hey, maybe they do. I mean, the polls could be right. They could. The only thing I'm really commenting on is this lack of confidence coming from the left. And if they're not confident, why would someone vote for them? People like voting for the winner, right? So if the Democrats, the left, you know, these people keep thinking they're going to lose. There it is. Anyway, stick around. I got one more video coming up in just a few minutes. Apparently, a new study, a, bipart a, a nonpartisan study shows Google is actually biased against the right. 